Hi guys, it's Miss Mercedes. Uh, today I'm going to be reading you Digging Up Dinosaurs by Aliki. Uh, so it's Digging Up Dinosaurs and she says, and putting them back together again. So this book is dedicated to my little brother, Eli, who knows everything about dinosaurs. So if I mispronounce any of their names, I apologize and I'm sure he will let me know immediately. So this is Digging Up Dinosaurs by Aliki. Have you ever seen dinosaur skeletons in a museum? I have. I visit them all the time. I went again yesterday. I saw a patasaurus. There's the patasaurus. I'm let you guys look at everything that's going on down here. So this guy says it weighed 10,000 pounds. Little girl says, wow. The sign down here says that they are plant eaters. Move to the next page. We've got a little boy that's growling and pretending to be a dinosaur, scaring his sister. Stop that, you bully, says the guy in the green shirt. Imagine putting it back together like a jigsaw puzzle. And then over here in the corner, she says, a patasaurus once known as Brontosaurus. So when I went to school, they called them Brontosaurus, but now they are Apatosaurus. I saw Corythosaurus. I saw Iguanodon and Triceratops. I like to say their names. It's actually really tough to say their names. Okay, so here's the Corythosaurus. Down here they're saying, that's how it looked. There's the Corythosaurus. It was a plant eater. It looks like a duck. I'm glad it's extinct. That thing on its head is a crest. How do you know so much? It doesn't fit on the page. Oh, he's trying to draw it. It's too big. And then here is our Iguanodon and Triceratops. So those were both plant eaters as well, according to the sign. And they say, I recognize Iguanodon by its horn, ooh, its horn thumbs. This one says tri means three, three horns. Oh yeah. So, the prefix of triceratops is tri, which means three. This one says, and now, sorry, let's see what's up. Scolosaurus was just where I had left it, and Tyrannosaurus rex looked as fierce as ever. Tyrannosaurus used to scare me. I still can't believe how big it is. Just its head is almost twice my size. I'm not afraid of dinosaurs anymore. Sometimes I call them, you bag of bones, under my breath. I can spend hours looking at them. I used to wonder where they came from and how they got into the museum. But now I know. So right over here, got a little one that says, I'm scared. Here he is. Got a whole tree of people that are running over here to see the Tyrannosaurus. Oops, I'm kicking things under my table. This is a little fella. One swat of his tail would show you how little. Hmm, he looks little next to the other dinosaurs, but he's pretty big compared to them. And then here's our Tyrannosaurus. Says, Hello up there, the king, the king of the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs lived millions of years ago. A few of them were as small as birds, but most were enormous. Some dinosaurs ate plants. Some dinosaurs ate the meat of other dinosaurs. And some may have even eaten the eggs of other dinosaurs. Dinosaurs lived almost everywhere on Earth. They lived for millions of years. Then they died out. 
No one is sure why they became extinct, but they did. There hasn't been a dinosaur around for 65 million years. Here's some dinosaurs we've got. Up top, we've got the Diplodocus. We've got our Brachiosaurus. We've got the Tyrannosaurus. Oh boy, I'm going to try to say these. I can't read them backwards, though. Then we've got the Compsognathus. Compsognathus right there. And then this guy is the Ornithomimus. Ornithomimus. Again, if I'm saying any of these wrong, I apologize. Until about 200 years ago, no one knew anything about dinosaurs. Then people began finding things in rock. They found large footprints. They found huge, mysterious bones and strange teeth. People were finding fossils. They began asking questions about them. Here's some people finding fossils. This one says, what monster made a footprint three feet long? The answer is a patasaurus. This one says, did this belong to a human giant or to, oh, a megalosaurus? What beast had six inch teeth? The answer to that was, you guessed it, the Tyrannosaurus. Fossils are kind of a diary of the past. They are the remains of plants and animals that died long ago. Instead of rotting or crumbling away, the remains were preserved and slowly turned to stone. So here we've got a picture of how things become fossils. So this is 80 million years ago. We've got a dinosaur that just passed away. It says, dinosaur dies and sinks into the river. Its flesh rots. Its skeleton is covered by mud. So it has to get covered by the dirt to become a fossil. In time, the mud and the skeleton turn to stone. So both the mud and the skeleton turn to stone. And the next step says, Dinosaur is hidden for millions of years. The earth changes. Some of the, sorry, I'm trying to read upside down and it's very difficult. The earth changes. Some of the stone breaks away. Oh, so some of that mud turned into stone starts breaking away. And then here's our very last one. And this happened 100 years ago. Part of the dinosaur is exposed. Fossils tell about life on Earth long ago. Everything we know. Oops. Everything we know about dinosaurs come from studying fossils. This is a very tricky book for me to read in the camera. Fossil hunters found more and more big bones in different parts of the world. Scientists studied the fossils. They said the bones and teeth and footprints all belonged to a group of giant reptiles that lived on Earth for millions of years. The giants were named Dinosauria, or Terrible Lizards. So we've got a few people in history from the 1800s here. So we've got right here, Mary Ann, Mary Ann Mantell. She found the first dinosaur fossils in England. She discovered some giant fossil teeth. Then in 1825, her husband, Dr. Gideon Mantell, named the animal Iguanodon or Iguana, or Iguana Tooth. Nine years later, he founded a mass of Iguanodon bones. Oh, see, he found a lot of Iguanodons. And then... Fast forward to 1841, Dr. Richard Owen named the giant reptiles Dinosauria, which means 
terrible lizards. What finds these were. People crowded into museums to see them, but the dinosaur bones didn't just get up and walk there. They had to be dug out of the ground, slowly and patiently. All right, so here is a lot of people going and looking to see these dinosaurs. This is supposed to be in the 1800s when they were first found. So I will try to read some of these here for you the best I can. So it says, here they are, the dinosaurs, I mean. How did they ever get here? I can't look. Don't lose me. This is big. Everyone's here today. This is fun. Do we have to get close? You know too much. He says, a duck-billed herbivore named Hydrosaurus. They don't know whose footprints these are yet. Imagine how much they'll discover someday. Wait for me! He just doesn't want to be left out. Even today, digging up dinosaurs is not an easy job. A team of experts must work together. So we've got our whole team of experts right here on the page. Our first one is a paleontologist, a scientist who studies ancient plants and animals. This skull belongs to a plant eater named, I can't read that backwards, let's see, Scalitosaurus. We also have geologist, a scientist, Oop, a scientist who can tell the age of rocks and fossils. He's looking at the rock going, hmm, trying to figure out how old it is. We also have a draftsman who draws pictures of the fossil. There are drafts women too, is what he's telling us. We also have our workers who dig fossils out of the rocks. We're not the fossils. Oh, yeah. A photographer who takes pictures of the find. Cheese! And specialists who prepare the fossils for the museum. It says, don't bump the, don't bump the what? The baby! is how fossil hunters work. First, they have to find a dinosaur. They search along riverbanks and in quarries. They climb up high cliffs and down into steep canyons. With luck, someone spots a fossil bone poking through the rock. So here we go, we've got an illustration down here of them looking for fossils. This one says, you never know where you'll find something. This is dangerous. Look. Oh, I think they found something down here. The site is covered with a tent and the work begins. Sometimes the fossil is buried so deep, the rock around it has to be drilled or blasted. Tons of rubble are carted away. Scientists chip at the rocks close to the fossil. They brush away the grit. They have to be very careful. The picture here with a fossil site it says there may be just a bone or two hidden here. If we're lucky, there may be there may be a whole skeleton. It says a fossil is hard as rock, but very brittle. And, what did he say this here? Oh, and easy to shatter. This one says, oops. In that case, this dig could take months or even years. What a lot of rubble. A lot of rubble.
As soon as a bone is uncovered, it is brushed with shellac. The shellac helps hold the bone together so it won't crumble. Then the bone is numbered. Sometimes a skeleton has to be cut apart so that it can be moved. The draftsman draws each bone in its exact position and the photographer takes pictures. That way there can be no mix up later when someone tries to put the skeleton together. He says, don't move. Sometimes bones are found all scrambled up like this. This is finding out how they fit. Finding out how they fit together is another big job. When the bones are ready to be moved, they are carefully wrapped. Small bones are wrapped in tissue paper and put into boxes or sacks. So here they are preparing the bones. This one says match boxes are perfect for tiny pieces. And then right over here it says, oh, she's reading out a number. It says 532A224. And he is saying, imagine unscrambling these if we forgot to number them. Ooh, that would be pretty tricky. Large bones are left half buried in the rock. They will be dug out later in the, in the museum. These fossils are covered with a plaster cast, just as a broken leg is. So she's telling us here, she says the cast protects the bone. It's amazing how fragile even the big bones are. They're all pretty fragile. And it has a little bit at the bottom I'm going to read here to you says, first, the parts of the fossil that show are covered with wet tissue paper and then with strips of burlap dipped in wet plaster. Then the whole piece is wrapped in the same way. When the plaster dries, it becomes very hard. The tissue paper covering, covering makes the cast easier to, re, uh, makes the cast easy to remove later. Each bone is then packed in straw, put into a crate, and taken to the, the museum. Unpacking all these bones in the museum laboratory will be, ooh, will be a big job too. This one says, we're lucky there is a road this time. Oh, sometimes they might find bones where there are no roads. At the museum, scientists unwrap the fossil. They finish digging out of it out of the rock. They study the bone. This rock is 115 million years old. That means the dinosaur is two. I can list from these many flat teeth. Oh, I can tell from these many flat teeth that this was a plant eater. Oh, kind of cool. Scientists dig out the fossils in many different ways. They use a hammer and chisel, fine needles, power tools that work like a dentist drill, special sandblasting machines, and even chemicals that dissolve the rock but do not harm the fossil. That's pretty neat. They compare the bones to other dinosaur bones. They compare them to the bones of other animals. They try to figure out what size and shape the dinosaur was. They try to find out how the dinosaur stood and walked and what it ate. So he's saying, these are from an iguanodon skeleton. We can tell from the way the bones, the bones and teeth are shaped and worn. This is definitely an iguanodon hip bone. So they compared it to other dinosaurs to say, yep, these are definitely iguanodon. And this has a whole chart that they were looking at to compare it with. Okay. 
And he's saying, here is the hip bone. So they looked at the picture of that hip bone. And then they looked at their hip bone. And they said, yeah. That comes from the same dinosaur. If there are enough bones, scientists are able to build a complete skeleton. A frame is made in the shape of the dinosaur to support the bones. The bones are wired together one by one. They are held in place with pieces of metal. If any bones are missing, plastic or fiberglass ones are made to replace them. You can hardly tell the new bones from the old ones. After many months, the work is complete. The dinosaur skeleton looks just as it once did. So here they are taking a lot of time to put the skeleton together for us to see at the museum. All right. Oops. Until recently, only a few museums had dinosaurs. Then scientists learn how to make copies of the skeletons. The copy is hard to make. It takes a long time. The original skeleton has to be taken completely apart, bone by bone. A mold is made for each bone. The new pieces are made of fiberglass. A fiberglass dinosaur is just as scary as the original, but much stronger and lighter. So here they are taking apart this dinosaur to make copies of it. So you see she's filling in the mold in the bottom there. It says each bone has a top and a bottom mold. And they're showing you the process there. It takes a long time. The original bone is covered with rubber latex and an outer coating of fiberglass to hold the rubber stiff. This is peeled off the bone to form the mold. The inside of the mold is brushed with resin and filled with fiberglass. Many dinosaurs can be made from the same mold. Now museums all over the world have dinosaur skeletons, and many people can spend hours looking at them the way I do. Her very last dinosaur she's looking at says it is our Stegosaurus, and they're a plant eater as well. It says, see you in the museum sometime. All right, and that is the end of Digging Up Dinosaurs by Aliki. I hope you guys enjoyed it and join me for my next read aloud.